Richard Schneeman here. Today we are talking about Rails controllers and all the different things we can do with them. So I broke it out and my four favorite things I like to do with controllers are render, redirect, filter, and format. Let's go ahead and go uh, semi-in-depth into each one of those. First off, we're going to be taking a look at render. So we've already seen that if we go and direct a user to our products controller index action that they are going to render the index view. So in addition to that, we can actually pass in a string and tell it uh, be explicit and say render our index.html.erb. We don't need to do this because Rails has this uh, a convention that says if you go to the index action, you're going to render the index view. Uh, you can also even abbreviate that a little bit more. If you pass in something that evaluates to a string, then it's going to go ahead and look for, in this case, index, and then it's going to look for a uh, .html.erb in the products uh, in in the path. Uh, we can, if we want to, change it up a little bit. And even though we're sending our user to the index action, we can render a different view. Uh, we can render maybe say the new view or anything we want. Uh, so th basically, this is a way that uh, Rails says. Okay, yes, by default, we are going to render the index, but we are going to give you all the power and all the capability that you want. Uh, so this is very similar to our view exercise where we were reading in a file and then processing the ERB, turning it into HTML, and then you know sending it back. So this is a way that rather than reading in index.html.erb, we could read in anything you want.html.erb, uh, process that ERB, and turn it into HTML, send it back to the users browsing your site. And we are going to see this being a little bit uh, used a little bit in our example. Another thing you can do inside of a controller is redirect. Uh, so we, rather than rendering a individual view, you might decide for whatever reason that you want to redirect a user. So here we are pulling all of our products and this is another good uh, reason why you might want to do your SQL query inside of your controller because you can uh, then take a look at it, take a look at the data, and do certain actions based on that data. So in this scenario, we if our products is blank, if we haven't actually put any products into our database, then we could maybe say redirect to the home page. So just redirect to slash. Uh, you know, in, in practice, that uh, might not make so much sense. You might want to redirect to a new products page and give them a message saying, you know, hey, no products have been added. But uh, the point is that we can redirect from our uh, from our controller. So if a user comes in and, and we pull all of our products, if there aren't any, we're going to redirect to the home page. If a user comes in and there are products, then we're just going to render index normally. So uh, we can render, we can redirect. Uh, the next thing we're going to be using is filter. So we can filter different actions. We actually don't have a exercise on this, but this is one of my favorite things to do inside of a products controller. In the last example, we wanted to say, you know, hey, only show this view if we have products that exist. So if you wanted to pl apply a similar logic to all of the actions inside of your controller, you could use this thing called a before filter. So you you uh, say before filter inside of your controller and then you pass in the name of a method that you want to be your before filter. So in this case, ensure, ensure products present is your before filter. And then later on, we actually define that method, ensure products present. And here we are using the logic of redirect to unless uh, products count is greater than zero. Uh, we haven't seen the unless command before, but it works just like if, except it's the opposite. Uh, in this scenario, I like it a little bit better because it it reads very cleanly. Uh, unless products.count is greater than zero, we are going to redirect to uh, the slash URL. So this is doing almost exactly what we were doing in the last example. Uh, moving things out to a before filter is a great way to kind of keep things clean in your code, apply things to all of the actions inside of a controller. Uh, in addition, we can pass in other arguments such as only apply this to the index and the show action or, or apply this to every action except for maybe create an update. Uh, we'll be using before filters in a later class, but just wanted to kind of give you an introduction to it now. The last thing that we can do is format. So 
Um, we talked previously about having an API, how Facebook, how Twitter has APIs, and those are accessible by JSON, which is JavaScript object notation. And this is an easily readable format for our computers. We can use a respond to block and uh, pass in format. So if you do format.html, that means we are going to just in this scenario, uh, take the default action. So we're just going to render index.html.erb. And again, the, the pound means comment. So um, w that's just a comment I've left there that's indicating it's the index.html.erb. Uh, you don't need to add that to your code for this to work. The next line, format.json, is saying, okay, if this comes in and the user or the the request is looking for a JSON request, then they are going to render at products as JSON. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and take a look at exactly what's going on. If you go to localhost 3000 slash products and then you explicitly ask for .html, then this is what you're going to get. It's going to render HTML. Uh, it's going to read in that ERB, generate HTML, and spit it out uh, back to your browser. Uh, also, if we leave off HTML, it's just going to assume it because most generally, um, it's we don't like having to type in that .html. Instead of .html, we can use .json, and we'll get a response back that looks kind of like this. Here, we're, it's going to be an array of um, JavaScript object notation objects, and we can we can see that these actually look very similar to our uh, uh, products. So we've got a primary key, we've got a name of Railsbook, a price of nineteen. It's got our update of that. We've got our foreign key. You know, these are this is this is um, all of the attributes of our each one of our product objects. Uh, kind of enumerated in this hash-like structure uh, called JSON that most, uh, you know, most every programming language and every computer can understand. Uh, so that is uh, some different ways that we can get different functionality out of our Rails controllers. Uh, we had the render, redirect, uh, filter, and format. And all of those, notice most of them, um, actually, I think, no, I think, yeah, almost all of them used some logic from that initial SQL query. So if we still had that in the view, then we wouldn't have been able to use that inside of um, the logic to render, redirect, uh, filter, or format. Uh, so that is yet another reason why you want to keep your SQL in your controller. Okay, we are going to be talking about routes and route resources in the uh, next section and uh, explain how these map to our controller actions. We talked about routes in the last week, so um, if you're unfamiliar with that terminology, go ahead and watch last week's videos. Uh, thanks for sticking around and watch 